It's that time again, chatting with the Cougars, Everett German. And today we're going to talk uh, with the head women's golf coach at the College of Charleston, Jamie Futrell. Jamie, getting ready to enter your 25th year as the head golf coach at COC. And Jamie, first of all, welcome to chatting with the Cougars. Thanks. Thanks for having me, Everett. All right, Jamie, let's talk about it. Uh, obviously, golf, one of those sports in the fall and in the spring. We'll get back to how well you guys played there in the fall, but I want to kind of fast forward to uh, this past March when everything was kind of shut down, uh, the virus. Kind of tell us where you were, how you broke the news to your team, and uh, just in your years and years of being in college athletics, could you ever imagine uh, something like this happening that would completely shut down the sports world? Yeah, obviously shutting down the sports world, no. We were out actually at Briars Creek practicing, and we found out, you know, the day, the morning we had a coaches meeting, and it was like, well, you can still play this weekend. Then it was, you can't play this weekend. And then an hour later, it was like, you're not going to play anymore this year. So, you know, we were in the middle of practice, so I had to tell the girls that, you know, we were done. Um, and we would reevaluate, and of course they were upset and asking a bunch of questions. Um, it was just a strange time. And you know, Jamie, if there ever were a sport that you could say, well, we social distance every day anyway, uh, it's safe to say that your girls and yourself could have made a pretty valid argument, but I think at that time, just so much unknown, obviously you have to play it uh, close to the vest, and it's better to be safe than sorry. There are a lot of unknowns, and obviously now the golf courses are open, which is nice. Um, of course, the NCAA won't let us go watch golf tournaments, but, uh, you know, it's it's a sport where, you know, people can get out and play, and I can say I've gone out and played a few times the last couple of weeks as well. All right, Gene, let's go back to the fall. I know your team, I think they rank, were ranked as high as 11th in the in the country, kind of finished right around that 24th mark. Uh, a top 25 team you had there in the fall, Jamie. Uh, just talk about the success that you and the ladies had uh, back in the fall. Sure. We started out in the Cougar Classic, and we I think we were 24th early in the fall. Um, and actually the 11th ranking, when we ended this year, when everything shut down, we were – we were ranked 11th in stroke average in the country. So that just speaks volumes of the year we had. But we did get off to a good start, the Cougar Classic at Yeamans Hall. Um, you know, when you beat North Carolina, Auburn, Tennessee, NC State, Penn State, um, it kind of gets you going in the right direction at the start of the year. So that helped us, and that really jump-started our year. You know, Jamie, I believe you also won three tournaments this past year. Uh, your team, just a solid team. You always do such a great job. I've always wondered, like, what your recruiting budget must be like because all these foreigners that you uh, bring over that can absolutely strike the ball well. Uh, talk about the team that you had uh, this year in terms of some of the individuals led by a pretty good freshman that uh, we're happy she's going to be around for a couple more years. Yeah, we're definitely happy Emily's going to be here. It was kind of a – Different year for us is our top three players were actually all from South Carolina. Um, Emily Dunlap, Jody Tyndall, who's a junior, and then Victoria Husky, who was a senior. So, you know, throw in my English girl, Olivia Hamilton, and then another senior, uh, Anna Rotliff, and that was basically our starting five the whole year. So it, we were – it's nice when the number five player can be the best player on your team on a given day. That's uh, something that I think that's why we were so good. You know, and speaking of that, that depth uh, that was good to have when you have that type of, uh, I guess, just across the board, not too young, not too experienced. Now with the season ending in March, as we all know, the NCAA allowed seniors to return and, Yes, pretty good news for you. One of your uh, better players, uh, seniors, she will be returning next year. Uh, talk about your senior coming back. Yeah, Victoria Husky, um, she's from Greenville, and she's coming back. She's actually was the player of the year in the conference. She was the defending player of the year, didn't get a chance to defend it this year. Um, and then she's like number four all time on our list. So she's a little bit better than just a pretty good player coming back. She's one of the best of all time here. All right, talk about your event uh, out at Yeamans Hall, Jamie. One of the, the better golf tournaments uh, across the country from what I've heard. Uh, also, I think you said you played out at, at Kiowa. And it's just really neat that, you know, for Cougar Nation, uh, an opportunity to see 
uh, the College of Charleston play at some pretty nice courses here uh, in the Low Country. Yeah, I mean the Yamas Hall. This will be our 17th year coming up, um, and John Rivers helped us start that. And Yamas Hall has really just uh, taken it and run with it, so that we get usually seven to eight top 25 schools there, and then a bunch of perennial powers as well. So we just – they're treated like members when they get there. The golf course is amazing. It's sort of like a, an Augusta feel to it, and everybody wants to come there. Amy, talk a little bit about once everything returns back to what we think will be normal uh, for your sport, because as you mentioned earlier, it's pretty uh, easy to social distance uh, on the golf course. Talk about what you think that will look like and will there be any changes to what you guys have always been doing uh, in the past? Yeah, I think you'll see changes. I think um, you saw that with the, the match two or whatever that Tiger and Phil and them put on where now they touched the flag stick, but when the first tournament they had back with the one that Ricky Fowler and I can't Rory. Dustin, was, Dustin Johnson. Yeah, uh, Dustin, Dustin Johnson, Johnson, Rory McIlroy and – um, Hovland, Victor Hovland, you know, they weren't touching the flag stick. They weren't doing that stuff. And we're going to probably have to incorporate that into our first tournament where, you know, the rakes aren't in bunkers. Um, they don't want you touching the flag stick. So we're going to have to figure out how to navigate those type of things. Now, we talked about all of the returners that you have coming back, including a lot uh, from the state of South Carolina, but apparently it sounds like, Jamie, there will be some international players coming and uh, joining the Cougars next year. But talk about those young ladies. As long as they can get their visas. <laughs> um, but, yes, uh, Victoria Hun from Germany, she's another German national player, um, long line of German national players. She's the next in line. Um, and she's – uh, one of the top three or four players in Germany in the junior ranks right now. And then Otilia Lead, easy for you to say, um, from Norway. She also played for the Norwegian national team this summer at the European Team Championships. So we're looking forward to having both of them. Um, and we returned four of our five starters. So it's going to be pretty competitive. Well, one area that you've always had success at – in addition to on the golf course, has been in the classroom. And your girls, once again, uh, just hitting hole in ones in the classroom. Seventh consecutive year uh, recognized by the NCAA for their APR performance, Jamie. And just a, a data boy uh, for your women's golf team and ladies, the, the ladies that really take being a student athlete serious. Thanks. They did really well. And, you know, I, I wrote them because we had a 3.71 was our GPA this semester before we did the pass fail stuff. <laughs> so, you know, that is an amazing accomplishment. And as I told them, I said, they were the best team we've ever had on the course and off the course. So, I mean, this is the group you're going to have to try to emulate going forward. And, of course, you've always, like we said, seventh consecutive year. That's a school record for any varsity sport uh, in terms of being able to uh, reach that. And I guess, Jamie, while during the downtime over the last, what, eight or nine weeks, uh, what's it been like for you in terms of communicating with the girls? Obviously, they did a great job in the classroom, finished the semester uh, strong and at a high point. What's it been like for you and your interactions with the girls since they've left Charleston? Sure, with everybody all over the world, <laughs> not just in <laughs> South Carolina, uh, we have to catch up at different times. So uh, I've kept up with everybody. The, the uh, Europeans who are coming back, they've actually sent me a couple of videos. We finally got to hit golf balls, you know, because they've been locked down a little more than we have. Um, and then obviously the South Carolina girls have kept up with a little bit. It's e kind of easier to call them and keep up with them. And um, – yeah, we're just kind of keeping in touch and in a holding pattern right now. So in terms of the offseason and this summer, what do these girls do? Do they play in tournaments in their area? Do they just basically work on uh, just hitting golf balls at the range? Uh, what does a, a CFC women's golfer do uh, during this downtime uh, during the summer? Sure, they're going to work on their game. But usually this time, tournaments in summer are really starting to ramp up. Uh, first of June, and there's just not a whole lot out there. There is in the United States now, but the Europeans have canceled a lot of their tournaments. So 
it's going to be interesting when everybody gets back here and hasn't had that summer tournament golf that they usually are. So I think we'll be – and it's not just us, but I think some teams might be a little rusty. Now, Jamie, with you all obviously hosting tournaments as you've done over the past uh, years, are those planning phases, are they already done? Are you still kind of putting them together? Do you have a plan A, plan B if you can't host? Or what does the fall look like for you as, in terms of preparation? Sure. We have two tournaments now, um, obviously Yeamans Hall. Um, nobody really wants to leave Yeamans Hall, so nobody haven't had any cancellations on that one yet. Um, but what we're finding is, like the Briars Creek Tournament, which is another one like Yeamans Hall, it's becoming a little more regionalized this coming year where teams aren't going to fly as much. Um, obviously, budgets are hurting not just from the smaller schools, but actually the big schools have actually started saying, we actually have to pay attention to <laughs> what we're doing. Um, so, you know, that's made some of the tournaments a little more regionalized. Um, we're a go on the tournaments. Uh, the NCA will tell us yes or no in the, eventually, but everything right now is a go, and they're all signing up. So, you know, it, I know it's not going to be the same, but it's kind of status quo on that part. Now, Jamie, you, like I mentioned, you've been at Charleston for 25 years as a women, uh, women's golf coach, and uh, I have the pleasure of getting to hang out with your son during uh, men's basketball season. He's the head manager for the program, and that would be pretty cool for you to uh, see your son in action within the athletic department, uh, really an athletic department that he's grown up in uh, there at Charleston. Yeah, I'm really proud of him. He's done a, I think he's done a really good job with basketball. I know you, you joked a few years ago where he, he didn't say a whole lot. <laughs> but uh, when he does speak, it's, he speaks volumes, so I'll give him credit. Uh, but it's great to see him do that. I, I think he really enjoys it. Uh, and just watch him grow up over the last three years because obviously he's taken on some uh, pretty big roles there as one of the managers. And – just to see him grow up has been a cool process. Well, safe to say, Jamie, he's not one of the managers. He is the head manager. Yeah. He's the one that when no one else knows what's going on, I always know I can text uh, Tyler, and Tyler can let me know where I need to be, what time I need to be, what I need to bring, don't need to bring. So yeah. I, I greatly appreciate, uh, you know, obviously Tyler. And it really is almost kind of like a family affair. Of course, your wife used to be the head trainer, and now she's a professor at the college. So I guess it's just safe to say that everybody just kind of comes together down to CSC. It's like a family trip. Uh, I mean, my wife deals with at-risk students now, so that's, uh, you know, kind of important. And, you know, she's on the other side of campus while we're on this side of campus. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, my, you know, I've got a picture from Tyler, one of my first teams, one of him – just being carried along just a little, I mean, knee high to the one of my players. And to see now he's six three or whatever, and it's just a difference. And then, you know, my daughter's going to North Greenwood to run track and cross country next year. So that's a cool thing as well. Nice, nice, nice. So it'll be a, a few trail uh, family affair down there at COC. And, you know, you mentioned you kind of let the cat out the bag, Jamie. You were able to play golf. Uh, a couple of weeks ago. So in addition to sneaking out on the golf course and playing, I don't know, nine or 18 holes, what all, what else have you been doing uh, during this downtime uh, during the coronavirus? Uh, a lot of yard work. I would say whatever my wife says, but I that get in trouble for that. Um, you know my wife well enough. So, um, but yeah, I mean, yard work's kind of my quiet place, I guess. So exactly. A lot of that, but really we're, we've worked, even though we've been done, with all the scheduling and the NCAA rules that seem to change every day, we're not off, that's for sure. <laughs> so that's always a, a good thing. And maybe I'll suggest to Matt Roberts that we just have uh, all the coaches submit pictures of their yard work that they've accomplished over the last you know, 9, 10, 11 weeks and just see what, what, which coach came up with the, uh, did the best job on the landscape. Not a bad idea. <laughs> not, not a bad idea at all. Well, Jamie, as always, man, we appreciate it. So proud of the women's golf team, uh, just getting it done. Uh, student athlete, that's exactly what they are. And your team has uh, excelled in the classroom and on the golf course. 
had a, a solid start in the fall. We're off to big things in, in the spring, and I'm sure you'll pick up right where you left off once everything resumes, uh, hopefully here uh, in August. So we appreciate you taking some time and joining us on the show. Well, thank you very much. And I'm just looking forward to the time we can all get back to school and um, hopefully that's sooner than later. Well, again, don't forget if you need uh, Jamie's schedule, the golf schedule, or anything you want to know about the women's golf team, uh, log on to cfcsports.com. That's cfcsports.com, and you can find out all the player profiles and, you know, try to figure out where each golfer is from. It'll, there'll be, it'll be a test uh, mm -hmm. where all of our student athletes on the women's golf team uh, is from, but you can start practicing for the test well, obviously, logging on to the website. So, Jamie, thank you again. That's Jamie Futrell, the head women's coach at the college, women's golf coach. Thank you for watching Chatting with the Cougars. We'll see you next time.